talk about the uh, elements of this, I'm not going to discuss the details on this. Um, you know, you can just have a look at it. Business feasibility, what does it mean really? It is about the strategic fit. It's about the market conditions. So if you look at the market conditions now, it is actually pretty bleak with respect to uh, the kind of um, getting uh, the funding from uh, banks, funding from the financial institutions, getting the uh, shareholder uh, trust and faith into your product. So at this time, it's actually pretty low. It's almost like um, you know, a closed market. If you come up with some product and idea at this point of time, I think it's, it's surely it's going to be a success because it's almost down. Now, everything people want to look up, it can't go any, any worse than this. It has hit it, it's rock bottom. So you can actually time your launch of your product in the context of your market conditions. How is it in general with respect to the market? Again, that's what we're talking about timing, right? The timeliness of it. So again, example for this is when, when you've got all the other options closed, you actually come up with uh, your own product with, with something like the vaccine, for example, all the, um, oh, pretty much all the companies, all the health um, authorities in all the countries have been saying that, uh, the, the vaccine was just around the corner for, uh, uh, for, the, for the COVID-19 virus. Um, they were saying, yeah, we, it will be ready next week, next month, next, next month. They've been saying it for a good few months now from March onwards they're saying it's going to be getting ready next month, next month. And uh, now they're talking about 2021. So, but the point is the first, the first and foremost company which would come up with the actual working you know, antivirus or vaccine for this would be the successful one, right? Because it has timed it properly. It knows that it's going to actually sell millions. Apparently, um, US, I just read a news that US has actually um, bought in bulk um, a billion, a billion uh, syringes to deliver the vaccines. So which means that there is a huge um, uptake, huge interest in not just the, the, the vaccine, but also a lot of other related uh, products and services. So yeah, that's the timeliness. And the physical infrastructure, whether you've got the physical infrastructure to deliver that, whether you've got the organizational structure, the, the reporting, the resources, the hierarchy, and how culturally fit that one is. For example, I still remember um, one case where uh, um, a product which is very popular in everywhere else was not popular because I think it's, it's Pepsi. They translated Pepsi to, uh, to Chinese. Uh, a literal translation of that actually may, meant, oh, is it Pepsi or was it Coke? Coke, Coca-Cola. It literally meant uh, bite the wax tadpole or something. <laughs> so they actually tried to uh, you know, literally translate what Coca-Cola meant in each of the regional languages around the world. And they actually started uh, delivering that. So they put that into the language and in the script of that local language, Korean, Chinese, Hindi, Russian, and then they actually deployed. And then it was never a, a success. They, people didn't take, didn't drink Coke apparently in, in this market and then they understood why they wanted to understand why it was a flop. And then they found that that's because perhaps the uh, way it was spelled literally on the, on the carton of that, uh, the, of the bottle. So it actually meant in, in that language, I think was it Chinese or Taiwanese, it says uh, bite the wax tadpole. <laughs> Who would bite a wax tadpole to drink something? So, <laughs> so it was obviously a misfit there and uh, they had to, you know, withdraw all the, the Coke bottles from, you know, and then re reintroduced. So funny thing. Yeah, it's very, very important again with respect to what we're doing. So um, you've got global market, everybody's, um, you know, working on, uh, for example, you've got Amazon, which actually pretty much works across the countries. So it should make sure that you've got your marketing, your promotions, campaigns, and the products packaged in a way that actually makes sense to the local cultures, it should not make them, um, you know, make them averse to your product. So that's a very important thing. Process compatibility, again, very, very important. Uh, how, how compatible are your processes? How, um, how aligned are they to your, to your vision, right? So you cannot have something which you cannot produce. So that's why I'm talking about the productionization of your idea. It's not just enough if you've got one idea, one product and you say, yeah, yeah, yeah I, don't, I did it. How can you make thousands? How can you make millions of it and make sure that all your customers around the world could access that? That's the process cap capability. And uh, how you know, capable are your workflows, your processes, your uh, manufacturing uh, aspects, everything, all of those would come into picture, productionization.